standing, Mindy. Yeah, that's how you turn a belt into a keep your distance stick. That's fantastic. Thanks. What an amazing keep your distance utility belt. <laughs> keep your distance stick. Utility belt. Stick. Belt. Stick. Belt. Stick. Belt. Stick. Belt. Stick. belt. I mean, keep your distance stick. <laughs> <laughs> now all you need to go out in public is a pair of gloves, mm -hmm. your sticks, and a face mask. Hey, Chad. Speaking of masks, whatever happened to that Comedia half mask you were making for me? Good question, Mindy. Yes. Let's go in and finish it off. Yeah. Here on Making, making stuff, stuff and Doing Things. <laughs> and now I'm going to cut away my portable face from its moorings, either with this, a sharp knife, or if you have it, a craft knife. The nose might get a bit stuck inside of the nose. And so what you have to do, don't be delicate with it, really get in there and peel it away. And if you put enough Vaseline inside, whoa, it's gonna come away from the plaster. Something stuck in there, get a knife. Ah, oh, that came out very easily. To trim around the outside of my mask. The eyes are the window to the soul, and in order to see Mindy's soul, we are going to cut out the eyes of her portable face. And I'm gonna use this sharp knife, make a hole, and then widen the hole. But I'm gonna make sure that my fingers are either side of the hole I'm gonna make in order to make sure that I don't cut my finger. I'm gonna find the midpoint and yeah, there we go. And from this place, I can begin to cut out the eye scissors to make the hole bigger. I'm gonna cut right round to make a really big eye so we can see Mindy's soul. At this point I am working on the eye of the mask. And you can see that the shape tells you a lot about the kind of person that the mask is. And I'm not gonna be afraid of carving away on this piece of the brow or the bags under the eyes to find the pantalone eye. The edges are exposed. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna seal the edge of the mask. I'm gonna make a slightly thicker paste. And I'm gonna get this all nice and gooped up. And then I'm gonna make some thinner strips here so that I can really get the edge of the mask all sealed off. And I'm also going to do this for the inside of the eyes. sealed the outside of the mask. When this is finished drying on the outside, I can then add a few final uh, contours and touches and details using my clay dough. So I'm gonna do that. I might add a little bit to the lip on the underside. 
Maybe add a little bit of uh, a little more bag under the eye. And then I'll be ready to spackle. I'm gonna cover it with spackling compound. And this is vinyl speckling compound. You can get this from any hardware store. I'm gonna take some of this and I'm just gonna spread it on through. I'm gonna cover the entire mask and speckling compound. Then when this is dry fully, I can begin the process of painting the mask. But before that, I'm just gonna sand it down, make sure that the uh, surface is nice and smooth and ready to work. All the rough edges are gone, and I'm using a, uh, a medium green piece of sandpaper here. Look now, I've got most of the speckle out of the contours, and this leaves a good hard surface. But I want to seal the back of the mask as well to make sure it doesn't get damp and to protect it. So I'm going to paint the inside of it using this. This is acrylic paint. Yeah, that's pretty dry. And I'm going to paint the outside with brown so it looks like uh, a kind of leather mask feel. Um, this is burnt sienna. In other words, brown. I'm getting to a point where I'm finishing the very last spots. I've got into all the nooks and crannies. This is just a general brown wash. I'm gonna set this aside to dry until the next layer. Now that it's dry, I'm going to highlight all the lumps and wrinkles of Mindy's portable face. And in order to highlight <laughs> those a little bit more clearly, I've got a flashlight. I'm just going to run this over Mindy's face to show all the nooks and crannies. In order to create shadow, I'm going to use a little bit of brown a little bit of blue. I'd like to quickly introduce something to you called dry brushing. This can save you a lot of time and effort, and it's kind of fun. If you have an area like this that you want to highlight or low light, shadow, then you can pop something on there like that. And then with a dry stubble brush, you just run over it like this. And the brush itself will do a lot of the work for you. Moving on into highlights now. Uh, we are going to change up the palette. So I got a little bit of white, not too much of the white. And a little bit of yellow, not too much of the yellow. And then I'm just gonna ease some of the brown and the white together. And then I'm gonna add some of this yellow. And with these highlights, I don't want to add too much. Just a dab to begin with. And a lot of dry brushing. I'll give you a 
an example of that right now. I'm going to add just a bit across here. And then dry brush that in. make that even lighter. Just to make the wrinkles pop. Or should I say, make Mindy's wrinkles pop. Don't be afraid to get these uh, ridges a little bit of light but in order to give a bit more life I'm gonna use some red because underneath this guy is a bit of blood so I'm gonna take this brush and just pop a little bit of red in there and then my dry brush I'm just gonna use to spread that red out and you can see that it begins to give Mindy's old woman, a little bit of life. And we can also add this red to give a kind of life highlight in all kinds of places. On the lips especially, we want to give a lot of red. Because I think Mindy's lady would wear some really nice lipstick. One final trick. So we want to give the impression that this is three-dimensional. And so we're going to highlight the end of the nose, which we've done a little bit. And highlight here and here but we also want to shadow the edge of the mask so once again I'm gonna take some of this darker blue hue and the brown mix that up and then the very edges I want to darken completely We're about ready to attach Mindy's portable face to her face. And so we're gonna cut an incision just below the eye, somewhere around here. Once again, making sure your fingers are out the way, Chad. Nice deep cut. So eventually I managed to cut through. Shows how tough this stuff is. <laughs> and now I'm gonna use this piece of elastic and insert it through the gap that I've made. So you make sure this hole is big enough for to insert this piece of rubber band. I'm going to get some cloth or ribbon to tie into here. And I've got um an old t-shirt here. And I am cutting strips off this old t-shirt from the seam because that's nice and strong. Now we're gonna try our portable mask. 
on Mindy. We want to seal our wonderful paint job and seal the stuff at the back so that um, it doesn't taste quite so salty. <laughs> yeah, so normally I'd use something called Mod Podge for this, but because we're in lockdown, we're gonna use something different. This incredible technical stuff we call Elmer's glue. Yeah, we're gonna take some Elmer's glue. We're gonna dilute it just a little bit. And then using this, we're gonna seal the paint job we've made forever. And when it dries, it'll be see-through. There'll be a protective skin over our paint job. And now that the Mod Podge is dry, we can add a few accoutrements like eyelashes. Now it's time to try it on Mindy. <laughs> there you are, Mindy. Your very own portable pantalona face. And it's made out of things from just around the house. That's right, Mindy. Things you might use to bake a cake or even read while you're eating a cake, <laughs> like oh, a newspaper. Chad, <laughs> come on, I want to give it a try. I'm so excited. Oh yeah, but you be careful. Masks have spirits that could take you over, Mindy. <laughs> oh, who's Mindy? What? My name is Estelle. Whoa. And you are a very fine young man. Now, now, hang on, uh, Estelle. Ah, Estelle, just yeah. wait a minute. Whoa! Oh, 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 o